The Zhiyun Weevil 3 has got to be one of the most unusual looking gimbals to come to market. And when I first received mine, I was sent it by Zhiyun prior to release just for the purpose of making this video. The first thing I thought when I saw it was, why? Why would you make this really sort of unusual, odd looking gimbal? And then when I picked it up, the way I felt about it was the, the way I felt about the first time I ever used an iPhone. Any time I went to do something or I thought this is the way I would want this to work, it just kind of worked that way. Everything from sort of the adjustable sling support to the wrist support to the way the hand grip felt in my hand to where the buttons are laid out, I kind of have this sense that when they made this gimbal, they just went back to the drawing board and said, let's take all the knowledge we have now and just design a gimbal from scratch. And many of the elements of their previous gimbals are part of this gimbal. But they've obviously addressed a lot of problems or a lot of ergonomic flaws in their previous gimbal and they've addressed them all in this gimbal. And the result is a gimbal that looks completely unconventional. It looks completely unlike any other gimbal that I've used or seen. But honestly, within a few minutes of using it, you're fully going to understand why they've made these changes and just how much easier they make your life and they make using a gimbal. And the first thing that stands out is the fact that they have put this sort of base on the bottom of it. It's almost like sort of a handle on the bottom of a baseball bat or something like that. And essentially what it appears they've done is they redistributed the weight sort of down to the bottom of the handle. Now, this makes a lot of sense when you actually think about a gimbal and how you use it. Traditionally, when you're using a gimbal, you've got this sort of skinny little lightweight handle at the bottom of the gimbal, and then you have got your heavy camera at the top of the gimbal. This makes the setup sort of very top heavy, and even when you're holding it with just the handle, it just means most of the weight is up there, and you are putting a lot of stress on your forearm and bicep to sort of keep it upright. So any weight that you can move to the bottom is actually going to help balance that thing a little bit better. The other thing you're going to find about this redistribution of weight is that when you use it in the sling mode, and now the sling handle is actually connected to the bottom where that weight has re been redistributed, rather than up the middle of the gimbal where their previous sling structure was, what you're going to find is when you go down into the sling mode, the gimbal just sort of sits perfectly level with the ground. It kind of just hangs perfectly. There's almost no stress and effort required to actually keep that camera in position and pointing straight out. It just kind of hangs there. So redistributing that weight, moving it to the back, just gives you a better balance, not only when you're holding it upright, but also when you're holding it in the sling position. Battery technology continues to get better and better. And with this extra space they've created with this sort of bottom plate on the handle, They've been able to integrate enough battery capacity to give this gimbal 21 hours of battery life. Now, the way that gimbal manufacturers test battery life is not actually generally real world use. It's kind of just a gimbal sitting there on its own with sort of the, a mid-sized camera that they expect that this gimbal can handle. But if you've got 21 hours in that more perfect scenario, you know you're probably going to get at least well, 12 to 15 hours, at least 11 hours in real world use. That means that this is a one and done, you charge it up, you can use it all day, and you're not gonna have to worry about running out of battery during the day. Now in addition to that base plate on the bottom of the gimbal, there are two other features that are really going to jump out at you. And the first one is the wrist support. Now, the wrist support to me is a completely game-changing thing. It's something that had never occurred to me. I was actually talking to a buddy of mine the other day, and he was saying, I've always thought there should be a wrist support for when you're using a gimbal in that flashlight position. And he's absolutely right. And I use gimbals in that sort of flashlight position quite commonly. It's probably one of the, the ways that I actually hold the gimbal the most. You do get a very tired wrist from doing that. It does put a fair bit of stress on your wrist. Well, this wrist support just sort of goes under there, cradles your wrist, and just kind of locks it in. It takes so much stress off your wrist, and it means if you're using it in this position for a long period of times, you're not going to get that wrist strain. And I just find it a really, really comfortable gimbal to use in that way. Now, because that wrist support and the sling handle are removable, if you find that you're out using it most of the time and you're mostly using it in the sling mode, you can actually remove the wrist support. Or if you find that you never really use it in the sling mode and you almost always use it in that sort of wrist supported flashlight position, 
you can remove the sling handle. So you can reduce the weight by removing one or the other element or even both of the elements if you primarily use it up sort of upright with two hands. So you've got a lot of flexibility there. In addition to that, when you take those elements off, you now have two additional rosettes where you can actually install a video monitor or you can install a piece of audio equipment. So you've got a whole bunch of versatility. You can either use those included uh, wrist support and the sling, or you can remove them and add different elements. So they really thought this through by making those two items removable. Now with the sling, the sling handle is actually adjustable as far as how the, far the length is, so you can make it longer or shorter and you can actually vary the angle to whatever suits uh, the way that you want to use the gimbal at the time. So you've got a lot of flexibility with that. With Jun's previous models, that wasn't possible. The sling was basically in one position coming off that sort of higher level body of the gimbal itself where they actually store the battery. And whatever angle it came off, that was it. You were kind of stuck with that and you couldn't actually make that shorter or longer. And even though this is really a very affordable mid-size gimbal, the flexibility it gives you is actually beyond anything that I've ever seen from any gimbal at any price point at this stage. Now, one of the other things I was really surprised about with this gimbal is the fact that it is a very powerful mid-size gimbal that can handle some pretty large cameras and some pretty large loads, but the gimbal itself is actually surprisingly light. Now, I also have the Weeble 2, and although I absolutely love that gimbal, the thing that stops me from using it as much as I would like is the weight. It is a reasonably heavy gimbal, and particularly if I'm using sort of like a mirrorless camera, or like one of the Sonys or Panasonics or Fuji or Nikon or whatever it is, one of their standard mirrorless cameras is a pretty light setup. And when I'm using that with the Weeble 2, I think the Weeble 2 itself is probably heavier than the camera setup. With this setup, this Weeble 3 is significantly lighter than the Weeble 2. So I am finding this a much better setup for me for sort of all day use. And I really do like the weight savings that they've implemented on this new gimbal. Now, in addition to totally revolutionizing the ergonomics of this and with what they're calling Sling 2.0, they're calling their original version Sling 1.0, this is their Sling 2.0, They've also added a couple of extra cool features. One is a light. It's kind of just a fill light to use in dark environments where you just want to brighten up your subject a bit. And the light itself has temperature control, so you can actually change what Kelvin value is coming out of the light. And you also have a wide range of brightness and illumination control. So you've got full control of that light. It's something that I don't use a lot, but it's not like you're paying extra for it. So they put it in there. It's there if you want it. If it's just something that you don't want to use, you don't have to use it but I just think it's a clever little thing, just runs off the battery and the gimbal, and so it's there if you need it. Now, the other thing that I thought was really, really interesting is they have now implemented a cardioid microphone built into the gimbal itself. And I thought this was fascinating because I know a lot of times with cameras, we try to, if we try to capture audio on the camera, we often end up putting a microphone on top of the camera. That actually makes the camera bigger and in most situations makes it impossible to go into that sling mode. When you're slinging the handle up to the top, you almost always can't go into that sling mode because that microphone makes the whole total package too big, and then the motor on the gimbal and the arm is going to actually hit that microphone. So this puts the microphone in the gimbal itself, that way you don't have that same problem. Now, I don't think you're going to get totally pro audio out of a microphone that is built into a gimbal, but for sort of scratch audio or for situations where you're sort of running and gunning filmmaking and you just need to capture a little bit better audio than what you're gonna get out of your camera, I think this is a great feature. And once again, if you look at the price point of this gimbal, there's no sense that you're paying any extra because they put this microphone in. So it's one of those things where it feels like you're not paying for it. It's a little bit of a bonus feature. It's there if you need it, but if you don't, you just don't hook up the microphone cable and you don't have to use it. Now, if you have any interest in the Weeble 3, I will put my best price links in the description down below, which actually allows you to go through and check the prices between a number of the top suppliers so you can find out who has the best price on this gimbal and who's got it in stock right now. Now, these are only my first impressions of a gimbal that I think is a truly revolutionary, game-changing gimbal. And in a future video, I will have a full breakdown and a detailed review and tutorial about this gimbal. So if that's something you're interested, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.